Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Sterling Heights City Council to order. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please bless our elected officials. Grant them courage and wisdom to do what is right for all citizens. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Riska. Can we please have the roll call? Mayor Taylor? Here. Mrs. Saraski? Here. Mrs. Kasky? Present. Mr. Radke? Present. Mrs. Schmidt? Present. Mr. Shannon? Present. Mrs. Zarko? Present. Thank you, Council. We need approval of the agenda. Mr. Mayor? Mrs. Kasky? Move to approve the agenda. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. First item on our agenda tonight is a report from our city manager, Mark Vanderpool. Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. First, uh, just a reminder that the city of Sterling Heights will commemorate Patriot Day, the anniversary of September 11th terrorist attacks against America, with a ceremony honoring first responders. Uh, so this year, Sterling Heights firefighters and police officers, as well as the mayor and the city council, will attend a special uh, guest at the a ceremony which will be at the American House Sterling Meadows, which is located at 33433 Shaner Road, and it'll begin at 10 a.m. Uh, the general public is invited to attend. Again, that's 10 a.m. at the American House Sterling Meadows, located on Shaner Road. We look forward to seeing you there. And also, I'm very uh, pleased to announce this evening that next month at the Philo Festival of Media Arts, one of the city's very talented employees, broadcast services specialist Bob Surgat, will be honored by receiving not one, but two awards for his work on a video for Play Place for Autistic Children, located right here in Sterling Heights. Uh, needless to say, we're very proud of Bob and Dan, who does a great job uh, also, and so glad that uh, Bob is part of our team. They really do a great job. I've said many times before, our video crew really does produce prime time uh, broadcast material. I think you would all agree with that. And so I wanted to congratulate Bob. I don't see him in the audience, but uh, I'm sure he's downstairs and, and he's hearing this. Congratulations, Bob. And now that uh, we're through, uh, Technically, uh, I shouldn't say technically, but uh, we're through summer for the most part. Uh, I wanted to give just a brief update on road resurfacing projects because while we've accomplished a lot over the last few months, we have a lot more to go. But let me show you where we're at with our progress so far. Uh, the presentation, I, I put this together before knowing the lockout uh, that we're now experiencing across southeastern Michigan from some of the operating uh, contractors and, and the association representing them. So uh, some of the timing may be at risk here, but let me breeze through this uh, quickly. Uh, first, Dodge Park resurfacing uh, started uh, last week and will be uh, finishing up this season. Uh, we expect to be through that in October. Uh, some of you have already experienced the delays there, uh, fairly significant, uh, and that's partly attributed to some of the work on uh, the Metro Parkway intersection as well. Uh, but needless to say, this will be a great improvement uh, once it's completed. And then Utica Road resurfacing will be starting in just a little over a week. Uh, this is a county project. The city does have a local share on it. Uh, you can't really see very well from this map, but this will go from Shaner up to Dodge Park Road. It'll be a complete resurfacing. I think most noteworthy with this project is the fact that there'll be bypass lanes now installed at all the roads uh, along this section of the improvement. So that will be a vast uh, improvement, and many residents have expressed concern over that, including city council in recent years. Uh, so uh, we expect that will be uh, completed by the end of November. And then also uh, Metro Parkway will see a significant project. Uh, this will be out near Van Dyke. It'll go for about 1,000 feet uh, to the east, uh, just past 
Home Depot. So to the Home Depot property line, and this is a view vantage point looking from Van Dyke. Um, this will be a complete reconstruct in uh, both directions. All lanes will be ripped out and will be replaced with asphalt similar to the M59 project. So uh, this will start in late September and will be finished up by the end of November. This is one of the worst sections of Metro Parkway in the city. Again, this is a county project, but the city does have a, a local match involved with it. 17-mile road from Dodge Park to Van Dyke. Many of you have already noticed that this project's uh, well underway. Uh, I think most noteworthy with this particular section is that we'll have a student uh, crossing uh, right at Davis uh, School, similar to the one that's down at Heritage. Uh, so it'll be a nice mast arm with a strobe activated light for those who are crossing, making it much safer. Uh, this particular section will be done in mid-September. And then the next segment of 17 Mile Road uh, that will be from Dodge Park out to Utica. As you know, this is in very rough shape as well. Uh, so we expect that will be done uh, early, well, early November-ish, uh, late October. North Van Dyke, as many of you know, has been under construction. This is moving along nicely. There's been a lot of concrete replacement work. Uh, that will then be capped with asphalt uh, overlay. Uh, this project uh, so far is on schedule, uh, barring the, any further lockout delays with this project, but uh, we expect it will be completed in early November. Canal Road is progressing very nicely. Uh, work on uh, the second phase will start very soon. Uh, we expect the entire project will be finished up in early November. This has been one of our largest projects of the season. Mound Road, many of you have probably noticed that the worst of Mound has now been repaired. Uh, everyone driving now is driving on the two lanes of uh, fresh asphalt. All the potholes have been replaced with uh, concrete. Uh, the milling's been done. So there's just the two um, outer lanes that will be uh, uh, finished up, including all the intersections. Uh, so there's still quite a bit to go. Uh, we expect it will be finished up in November. Uh, this could be subject also to some of the delays I'll talk about shortly. DeQuinder Road uh, is moving along nicely. The 19-mile road intersection will be opened up for in about another week. Uh, we expect this project will be completed in early November, and uh, it will vastly improve that entire stretch of DeQuinder. All of it will be improved now through our city. You might have noticed the uh, M59 work has been done in our city. There was some emergency concrete work uh, that commenced this summer and has all, already been completed. You'll see some, our, our two welcome signs are up now. Uh, you can see one as you're headed eastbound and you come over uh, M53. And then there's one as you're headed uh, westbound as you come over Hayes. Uh, so uh, the landscaping is in. The turf maintenance is going to take a while to... Uh, to really become established, uh, but we expect uh, next summer it'll be looking much better. Our neighborhood road project is going very well. Uh, we're on schedule with all of these projects. Uh, they're almost all complete concrete re reconstruction projects. None of our neighborhood projects are being delayed by the uh, lockout that was reported um, over the weekend and this morning. And you can see this is a full list of neighborhood local roads that are being improved the, this summer. 15 Mile Road is completed. Our goal was to get this done before uh, Warren Consolidated uh, started up school. So Sterling Heights High School was an inconvenience. So the project turned out great. Uh, there's just some uh, punch list items left with this one. Shaner Road, of course, has been completed. Uh, the project finally is uh, finished up and rides very nice. It's, it is a vast improvement, uh, to say the least. Ryan Road is all done. Uh, that required some major concrete replacement work. And our joint sealing program is underway as we speak. This will be finished up in, in November. So our jo joint sealing uh, project involves uh, approximately 30 roads, and the idea behind uh, this project is obviously to extend the longevity of our roads, um, and this is a very important uh, maintenance uh, preservation program. 
Some of our upcoming programs or projects uh, yet this season include Stadler. Uh, that work will be uh, starting very soon. And Sterling Drive, which is an industrial road uh, down on 14 Mile, just west of uh, Van Dyke. Uh, those will be starting up uh, shortly and finished up this year as well. Uh, now, some projects you can look forward to next year. Uh, Shaner Road, phase two from Plumbrook to Canal, will be done in the spring. Uh, looking forward to that uh, project. That'll be uh, pretty much uh, wrap up the Shaner work then for a while. 14 Mile Road, uh, these are county roads, by the way. 14 Mile Road from Rinda to Quinder will be completed uh, starting next spring. Uh, desperately needs the work. Utica Phase 2 from Dodge Park to Van Dyke will be done next year. Merrill Road, 19 Mile Road from Hayes to Shaner. And 18 Mile Road, we're still working with the county to secure this funding, but I'm very confident we're going to be able to get this in next year's road projects. It, it really needs to be done. Uh, that is a county road also. And we'll have another $4 million approximately in neighborhood road improvements uh, next summer. These are just the noteworthy projects. We'll have many more uh, projects uh, next year to add to the list. And so just some concluding comments on the lockout that I mentioned earlier. So uh, there is an association uh, that represents all the operating uh, contractors across the state. And for one reason or another, uh, they have not been able to finalize a labor agreement, which has been, I believe, expired on June 30th. Uh, so as a result, uh, there was a lockout that took effect beginning this morning. Fortunately, we are not affected on many of our city projects because of the lockout, but there could be a slowdown on some of the road projects in Sterling Heights. For example, uh, Mound Road could be delayed, uh, North Van Dyke could be delayed. Uh, it is possible that uh, DeQuinder could be delayed as well. Uh, so a couple of big ones. Uh, so it's really important uh, that the two parties try to get the labor agreement hammered out and get work uh, uh, going again. You could imagine if we had to go into the winter uh, with these projects unfinished, it would not be good, needless to say. Uh, so that is road day update. We'll provide another update at strategic planning when all these projects are wrapped up. But on behalf of the mayor and the city council and, and myself, I want to thank everyone for your patience. And lastly, uh, Mayor, on my report this evening, I would like to uh, introduce our library director, Tammy Turgeon, who would like to present a very interesting program uh, that has just started. Ms. Turgeon. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor Taylor, Mr. Vanderpool, members of City Council, Mr. Kashubsky, and residents. So it's the first day of school for many of our youngest residents, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to one of the library's newest services called Tutor.com. Uh, it's going to help all of us with schoolwork and homework, that wonderful thing we're doing now. Um, so I'm going to show you a short introductory video, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the program uh, when that video is over.
homework week could be so fun. Uh, so tutor.com was purchased by the Suburban Library Cooperative for all the residents of Macomb County, Troy, and Harper Woods. And you can reach the resource from our website at www.shpl.net and click on our services tab, or you can go directly to the service at www.tutor.com slash suburban. So tutor.com, it provides free one-to-one on-demand online tutoring through a messaging board as well as a shared whiteboard. And there are several self-study tools like practice quizzes and study guides. The tutoring service is available between 4 and 11 p.m. every day, while the self-study tools are available 24-7. So the tutors are all master degree teachers that have been background checked. Uh, there's a paper review source, like the video said, where you can turn in your essays and have them reviewed. You can also turn in uh, resumes to have those reviewed for you. Uh, we also have the Princeton Review's SAT AECT test prep program. And so tutor.com, you can really use it at all ages, from elementary school up through adult learners, as the video said. And it's going to really help mom and dad when they're struggling to help their kid with that hard math problem. I know I have used it already for that. So the subjects that are covered are math, English, science, and social studies. But there are also other resources that you can find on their links to websites, again, study guides, quizzes, etc. So you can also um, use that, I said, the review service for essays as well as your resume. And there is a job uh, a service on there to help you look for positions that you might need. So how do you access that service? Like the video said, all you need is a library card and you're in luck because it's the perfect time to get a library card. It's National Library Card Sign Up Month is September. So we're celebrating it uh, by having random prizes <laughs> given away at the library. We'll have them announced over our PA system. So if you happen to be in the library and you have your library card, you have a chance to win. And new card holders can also have a chance to win. If you get a new card this month, you'll get a small prize and have the ability to win a larger prize. So if you know someone who doesn't have a library card yet, or if you don't have one yet, please, I encourage you to come visit us in September. And all of our prizes and giveaways were provided by the Friends of the Library. Put a plug in for them. They have their bookstore. It's open most hours that the library is. All the money that they generate comes back to the library to pay for these great things. So tutor.com is just another example of us providing, um, meeting the educational needs of our residents. And I thank you for letting me speak about it today. Thank yeah. you very much, Ms. Turgeon, Mr. Vanderpool. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Vanderpool. Next item on our agenda tonight is a presentation. This is a swearing in ceremony for New Sterling Heights firefighters. Presentation, as always, is from our fire chief, Christopher Martin. Chief Martin. Good evening to yourself, uh, members of council, Mr. Vanderpool and Mr. Kashupski. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to introduce to you and the residents our newest firefighter uh, standing to my immediate right. His name is Nate Mazinski. He's 23 years old. He grew up in Clarkston and graduated from Clarkston High School. He got his medic training at uh, Genesis uh, Regional Medical System in Grand Blank, and he attended the Oakland Community College Fire Academy. Uh, prior to us, the seven months prior to us, uh, he was working for the Waterford Regional Fire Department. Uh, he comes from a family of first responders. His dad, Paul, is the public safety director in Centerline, and his brother is a Warren police officer. Both of them are in the audience tonight. So uh, it's my pleasure to also swear him in this evening. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take care of that. Absolutely. Hi, state your name. Hi, do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? The Constitution of the State of Michigan? The Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Sterling Heights City Charter? And the Sterling Heights City Charter. That I will comply with the rules and regulations of the Sterling Heights Fire Department? That I will comply with the rules and regulations of the City of Sterling Heights Fire Department. And will discharge the duties of my office to the best of my ability? And will discharge the duties of my office to the best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> Mayor, Council, if you don't mind, come on down and, uh, and greet our uh, newest firefighter.
trip. Uh, he drew the short straw, and he's got to speak now. <laughs> Unlike when we have a group of guys. <laughs> it is an honor and a privilege to be selected to work for one of the most advanced and proactive cities in the state of Michigan. I am truly grateful to, be, to have the opportunity to become a member of the City of Sterling Heights Fire Department. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mayor, I'll turn it over to you. Council, anyone, uh, any discussion, any comments? Uh, I would just, I guess, echo that. It is an honor and a privilege to serve uh, in the city of Sterling Heights on our fire department or our police department. And uh, we know that uh, you come from a background that understands that responsibility and understands the, uh, the honor that you're uh, taking on. And uh, so we have full confidence in you. Our chief has full confidence in you. Uh, our, our residents have full confidence in you. Our residents expect a very high level of service, and, and uh, so do we, frankly. And we, uh, we, we're confident that you're going to be able to provide it, and we wish you a long uh, career here in the city of Sterling Heights, and I wish you Godspeed, and uh, thank you for your service to, uh, to our 130,000-plus residents and all the people who work here and drive through this community. Uh, we have the best fire department in the state of Michigan, and it's because of men and women like you, so thank you for your service, and that's all I have. So, Chief. Um, thank you, Mayor. Thank yeah. you. Have a good evening. Thank you again. Good night. Moving on, next item on our agenda is an ordinance introduction, and this is to consider introduction of an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Article 5 of the City Code for the purpose of implementing changes in the benefits paid to eligible personnel of the 41A Judicial District Court. We have a presentation from our City Manager, Mark Vanderpool. Mr. Vanderpool. Ms. Uh, Mayor Taylor? Ms. Well, uh, we'll start with you, Mrs. Sorowski. Right. Thank you very much. I just would like to uh, respectfully request that I recuse myself from all deliberations on this item as it directly affects both my husband and his employment. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Sorowski. Uh, Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you very much, Mayor. The employee benefits payable to select personnel of the 41A District Court are established by city ordinance and codified and in uh, Chapter 2, Article 4 of the city code. The ordinance employees include the magistrate, which is now also the court administrator, clerk of the court, court officers, court reporters, and the probation officer. A limited number of employee benefits are afforded to the three judges of the 41A District Court pursuant to the same chapter and, and article. <coughs> chapter 2, Article 5 was last amended in December 2012, at which time many of the benefits afforded to the above individuals I just mentioned were substantially reduced due to the then existing economic conditions. Over the course of the ensuing five and five and a half years or so, the city's finances have stabilized and employee wages and benefits have been reflected in this trend. And they, that includes the CBAs that have come before city council the last couple of years. The following amendments to the benefits payable to the employees as reflected in the attached ordinance before you this evening include the following. The amount of compensatory time that may be accumulated by the <clears throat> individuals that were, were mentioned will increase. In the case of the magistrate court administrator, the maximum number of compensatory time hours to be accumulated increases from 210 to 235 with the maximum buyback of those hours increasing from 105 to 130 hours. For the clerk of the court, the maximum number of compensatory time hours to be accumulated increases from 149 to 210 hours, with the maximum buyback increasing from 44 to 105 hours. The base medical plan will be the same that uh, all that is included for all labor groups now, which is the Blue Cross Blue Shield high deductible plan with a prescription and drug benefit and annual health savings account contributions by the city in the amount of $2,400 for a two person or family and $1,200 for a single person. Again, that's now the standard across the organization. Employees will pay 10% of the health insurance premium to be implemented in the uh, fourth and fifth year, uh, which would be 5% in 2021, and thereafter 10% uh, 
of the insurance premium which the employees would uh, contribute toward. The high deductible plan as described will be taken into retirement for any eligible ret retiree after adoption of the ordinance. Uh, there would also be a 10% premium share uh, for the retirees in those cases as well. The longevity benefit for the judges will be increasing uh, as reflected in the ordinance uh, before you this evening. And there is a correction to accurately reflect all paid holidays for the employees. Uh, there is not an increase in the paid holidays. However, they're now properly reflected in the ordinance. And unfortunately, uh, they, they were not listed as such uh, previously. Um, the employees will also be getting uh, wage increases. Uh, with the exception of the, the judges who are handled through the state, the employees I mentioned will be getting uh, increases consistent with the rest of the organization, which is 2.5% in year one, 2% the second year, and 2% the third year, and the final year, 2.5%. Uh, While that's not reflected in the ordinance, uh, that has historically been the case, that they mirror uh, the, the executive group. Uh, so I, I, I simply uh, highlighted the noteworthy changes in the ordinance. And I'll be happy to address any questions that the city council may have. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Vanderpool. Open it up to the audience. Is there anyone who'd like to speak on this item? If not, council, we need a motion. Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Schmidt. Resolved to introduce the ordinance amending Chapter 2, Article 5 of the City Code for the purpose of implementing changes in the benefits paid to eligible personnel of the 41A District uh, Judicial District Court. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion, Mrs. Smith? Uh, Mr. Schmidt? <laughs> Mayor Sorry. Taylor, yes. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Kaszubski or Mr. Vanderpool, whoever chooses to, to answer this. This is a little different than what we typically do. We typically... Um, adjust uh, employee benefits through a memorandum of understanding. Can you just explain to the residents why we, we do this through an ordinance instead of an MOU? Mr. Vanderpool. Sure, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilwoman Schmidt, that's a very good question. Uh, we do have a number of collective bargaining agreements uh, throughout the organization that uh, cover all of our employees. However, the uh, district court, it, it, the employees I mentioned are not covered by a collective bargaining agreement and instead historically uh, their benefits have been covered under ordinance and, and it's unique uh, in part because of the way the state also funds uh, the 41A district court. So there just hasn't uh, been the need to uh, handle their benefits and wage increases through a collective bargaining agreement in, a, in the traditional sense. Okay, thanks. I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is just putting them in line with the rest of the bargaining units in the city, and I have no issue with this whatsoever. So thank you. I have nothing further. All right, thank you, Mrs. Schmidt. Mrs. Zarko, anything? Um, the only question I have is if um, Mr. Kaszubski or Mr. Vanderpool could let us know the last time that this um, ordinance was amended. Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilwoman Zarko, it was in 2012, so it's been some time. And again, as you may recall, back then we were in a concessionary uh, bargaining position. We were unfortunately reducing and eliminating benefits, and that even included the, the district court as well. Uh, thankfully, they were very cooperative and, and agreed to the same uh, concessions that the rest of the labor groups agreed to uh, even though they did not necessarily have to do that and we appreciated it so I think it's certainly appropriate uh, that now um, we're able to afford uh, wage increases and some slight benefit increases and certainly they should be inc included as well um, thank you mr. Vanderpool I just wanted to make sure that the residents knew that it had been a lengthy amount of time since this ordinance was amended and certainly the employees were deserving of these changes so thank you all right thank you mrs. Zarko council anyone else mr. Radke thank you mr. mayor um, mr. Vanderpool if for the chair uh, are the 41a district em uh, court employees allowed to use the care here facility we just cut the ribbon on uh, recently mm -hmm. mr. Vanderpool thank you mayor uh, Councilman Radke, uh, a very good question, and the answer is yes. And anyone covered uh, by our health uh, program 
is able to use the program. So, yes. That's all I have. Council, anyone else? With no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries uh, six to zero with one uh, recusal. Moving on, next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on any item on tonight's consent agenda? Mr. Marshall Owens. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. My name is Harry Marshall Owens, resident of Sterling Heights. Um, I wanted to talk about item C. Uh, about $1.26 million for 800 megahertz radios, accessories, installation services, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, every time we have a council meeting, we have something on here that the police need something new or they need something repaired. And the fire department needs something new, something repaired. I'm going to tell you I'm the last person on the wor in the world that wants to short either one of these groups from anything that will help them get their jobs done. Neither one of their jobs is that wonderful, and they could probably use any, any help they can get. But it strikes me that we're getting fed this in spoonfuls rather than come out and say, hey, police department needs 10 mil. Fire department needs eight mil. When are we going to? When are we actually going to find out the real truth on how much the city is planning to spend every month? Now I have run companies. I owned a company. I managed companies. I one of the first things I wanted to do is make sure who our competition was who our employees were, what our goal was, and what our expenditures were going to have to be so I knew how much money we had to make. I'd really, you know, I, I don't want to uh, beat this to death, but I'm not stupid. You know, if somebody keeps coming to me every day for a dollar, eventually I ask them, how the hell much money do you really need? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marshall Owens. Anyone else on the consent agenda? Nope. Well, I've been asking everyone else, not you, Harry. Oh, we already, you already spoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Mr. McGregor. William McGregor, Sterling Heights, obviously. Okay, so uh, my question also pertains to um, item C. Uh, I'm just curious if this is actually like, because um, I think there was a discussion about this a couple council meetings ago or whatever, but um, is this a total overhaul? Are we replacing like all the radios in the cop cars or are these um, going to be able to communicate with the radios that we have installed already? That's, that's really the only question that I had about this. Okay, thank you, sir. Anyone else on this item, the consent agenda? If not, Mr. Vanderpool, do you want to address the questions? Sure, Mayor, I'd be happy to. Uh, first, with uh, respect to Mr. Marshallone's question about uh, the police and fire having something on every agenda at every meeting, that's historically been the case because they are the largest uh, departments in the organization. So it only makes sense that uh, um, they're going to have items uh, uh, at every council meeting. And, and the question, I, it, it was kind of strange, but when, when will we know the truth about how much money they need? I think I paraphrased it somewhat accurately. Uh, the reality is you know that in the budget that's approved by the mayor and the city council. The budget uh, outlines all of our expenditures, including those in the police and fire department. In fact, during the budget hearings, we talked about this purchase uh, very specifically, including in the capital budget as well. We spent a lot of time on it. Uh, the, the radios that police and fire currently use, it's the lifeblood of their operation, uh, portable radios and mobile radios. It's the way they communicate. They haven't been replaced in 12 years. Imagine if your computer wasn't replaced in 12 years or your, your phone, your smartphone. So 
uh, 12 years is certainly uh, exhausting the useful life of the equipment and this was clearly budgeted. It was uh, very well publicized as our budget is every year. We have numerous uh, budget hearings and, and the budget is online. You can see it at our website. So Mr. Marshall owns, I encourage you to look at our budget, peruse it, and you will learn about every expenditure that the city council is reviewing at every council meeting. Of course, we have to spread out the expenditures of our budget throughout the fiscal year. That's why we have a fiscal year. Uh, so some come in, you know, uh, depending on the season, like for example, uh, the snow season, there's many mm. expenditures that, that uh, pertain to public works and snow plowing trucks just before winter. So we can't systematically even them out for every meeting, uh, but that's how it occurs according to the budget. In terms of um, uh, Mr. McGregor's question about are all the radios being replaced, and the answer is yes, all the radios in those departments are being replaced. Um, so we expect that they'll last uh, at least another 10 years for sure. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Vanderpool. Uh, Council, we need a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Konski. Move to approve the consent agenda. Support. support. It's been moved and supported with no discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is to consider an appointment to the City of Sterling Heights Board of Ordinance Appeals 2. Is there anyone who'd like to speak on this item? Mr. Jefferson. Good evening, Charles Jefferson. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Councilman Rackey this question because he was the one who nominated this person for uh, the board or commission. Uh, they didn't have, from my understanding, they didn't have their application in until the last couple weeks of the, uh, <clears throat> before this uh, uh, nomination to be appointed. And I was just wondering, what was the qualifications that separated this person from the other people that were that had volunteered? Because see, I go back to uh, the meet the candidates morning when you counsel at the time you just running for office at uh, the meet the candidates morning, where you came out against the uh, the appointments of city council. Uh, at, at the time, you agreed with the first one because everyone had a chance to put the application in uh, in a timely manner. They came down here, they interviewed themselves or met themselves with the council that was the present time, and, and you agreed with that. But the second one, you didn't you di didn't agree with. That's what you told us at the meet the candidates morning. You didn't agree with that because that one seemed kind of shanky because no one got to come down here and put their application in. The process didn't get restarted. Uh, and this looks like it's a little uh, shanky as well because the people already have put in their applications only to be undercut by someone who you personally knew to get on a board or a commission. And since this is the, it goes to nominating then an appointment, I want to ask anyone else up here, can they explain the qualifications or did you call a person? Where can we, where can the people find out this information on this person? Because these people represent us. Uh, and if you guys aren't going to do your job on that, the appointment, the nomination appointment uh, part of this is no good if you guys aren't going to, uh, seek the information out there, what, what qualifies this person or that person over another person. Uh, I don't know how many people applications was up there. Um, I just know this one came in late. This one got put up because a person knew a person and it looks a little shanky to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Anyone else on this item? If not, uh, Council, this is just one appointment. It was uh, not, there was a nomination at the last meeting. And would anyone like to make the appointment? <clears throat> Mr. Taylor. Mr. Radke. Resolve to appoint Aisha Faruqi to the Board of Ordinance Appeals 2 to a term ending June 30th, 2019. Subject to the appointing meeting, the qualifications set forth in Charter Section 4.03 
taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion, Mr. Radke? Uh, Mr. Taylor, I just would like to re reiterate what I said last week. She's a lawyer. She's lived in the city almost her entire life. Uh, she expressed interest to me in getting involved in the city. I think that we need uh, more diversity on our committees, especially women. I think she'd do a fine job, and I, I, su I support appointing her. Okay, thank you. I uh, agree with all that, and that's why I seconded, seconded the motion. Anyone else, Council? With no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that completes that portion of our agenda tonight. We'll move on to communications from citizens. Is there anyone who'd like to speak on any item not on tonight's agenda? Take you, sir, in the back. My name is Carl Langoni. I live at 40500 William Drive. And my concern is uh, I'm in the, I live in the 18th uh, 18 Utica area, but my main form of transportation is a bicycle. And I know some areas around some streets are hard to maneuver. And when I need to get to certain places up in North Van Dyke area, the, but I can't go straight up Van Dyke with all the problems, especially and all that. So I go up Utica Road from 18 to Van Dyke. I know there's an upcoming road project, but ever, it's been forever, there's no sidewalks either way. I had to ride in the street, and it's very dangerous for bicyclists and pedestrians. I know if you can be working into the road project up Utica that way to also put sidewalks on both sides so it'll be safer for pedestrians and bicyclists so we don't get hit by a car for no reason we can't help. So it, it, it would be helpful and safer for everybody not to hit a pedestrian or a bicycle or a P1 and get hit. So if you could so work on that, it would be a really grateful thing. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else under communications? Mr. Parker. George Parker, Sterling Heights, uh, Mayor Taylor, members of council, Mr. Vanderpool and Mr. Koshubski. On 17 April, many homeowners that live on the Sterling Relief Drain came and spoke to this council. They all voiced their reasons as to why they objected to the county proposed bike path in the drain behind their homes. At that meeting, council decided to vote on the bike path issue. Liz, Maria, Deanna, Barb voted in favor of the residents and against the plan for a bike path. Once again, we thank these four council members for their support of the homeowners that live along the Sterling Relief Drain. On 19 April, two <coughs> days after city council voted against the bike path, Candace Miller, the county drain commissioner, said the plan for a bike path in the drain has been canceled. At the July 17 council meeting, Mr. Radke, decided to bring up the idea of a bike path in the drain once again. He said he was sorry that Miller stopped the project. He also said when people see how good Dodge Park was received, maybe we could reapproach this project in the future. Mayor Taylor agreed, which was certainly no surprise. With that being said, it appears that Mr. Radke and Mayor Taylor may have partnered up to ignore concerns of the residents and push for a bike path in the drain at some time in the future. <clears throat> at the last council meeting, 21 August, Mr. Joe Benone spoke. He shared his personal rebuttals to all of resident concerns about a bike path and the Sterling Relief Drain. Because he likes to ride a bicycle and most likely does not live along the drain, I do not put much value on his rebuttals. I want to respond to a few of the rebuttals from Mr. Benone. He said that people trying to stop this bike path are in the minority. I don't believe this to be true. Other than Mr. Benone, I only remember Mr. Radke, Mayor Taylor, Mr. Shannon, Mr. Garapy, and maybe two or three others that were in favor of this trail. There were many residents that voiced their objection about this trail to the county and to city council. 
Mr. B. Known said, if we have a bike trail, our property values will go up according to the internet. It just came from the internet. Are we supposed to believe it? He said, with proper drainage, smart people will not drain in, will not drown in the relief train. It appears he forgot about children. Mr. Benone said several homeowners on the Macomb Orchard Trail are not concerned about privacy or vandalism. Good for them. However, that is not a good comparison to the Sterling Relief Train that has a lot more homeowners. It appears Mr. Benone is saying bike paths are good because sidewalks and roadways are danger areas for bike riders. What would be said by bike riders if the city passed an ordinance prohibiting anyone from riding a bicycle on a sidewalk or a road? Then what? Mr. B. Known is asking this council to consider his rebuttals and bring the trail issue up for a vote and allow the democratic process to decide. The bike trail issue has been around since the early part of 2018. I can only wonder where Mr. B. Known has been since the trail issue came up. Maybe he was out riding his bike on trails across the country. Who knows? All right, Maybe Mr. he Parker. came here to speak as a favor to some other person. Okay, Mr. Re Parker. That's uh, really that's five minutes. Time. Four minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Who'd like to be next? Thank you, young man. Hi, my name is uh, Theron Suvarna, and I would like to ask you guys a, a question about why there are no swings in Dodge Park anymore, because that would be the only reason I would um, go in like the evening, because everything else is like taken. That's all. Thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate your question. We'll respond to it after everyone's had a chance to speak. Mr. Jefferson. Uh, Charles Jefferson, Sterling Heights. Uh, Councilman Racky, I'm, I'm glad you brought up about that diversity. Uh, and here in Sterling Heights, uh, this is what Big Brain Shannon, <clears throat> Uh, as well, um, I don't know if you guys or if people have been paying attention as close as I have, but that's almost 35 fighters, all white males, no women, no colors, um, <clears throat> no transsexuals, no transgenders. Um, you guys were trying to put that off on us. Now we get to pay attention to what you're doing. And there you have it. Uh, next, Mr. Vanderpool, hopefully you can answer these questions. Up on uh, Hall Road there, is asphalt the best way to go in repaving these roads? Because I was driving between Shaner and Hayes, and the seams looked like there was going to be a problem. I think it was already a pothole in that area and it's new, new, in the new area that's just been fixed. Uh, also, can you tell us when the big ring is gonna be put in place? Um, another thing, Mr. Vanderpool, uh, is uh, these birds, and I'm talking about the, the bird scooters that we see in uh, Detroit and places like that. Are we coming up with some kind of ordinance at this point because Dodge Park and the Dodge Park Trail would be a, a good place for these uh, these scooters. And before we get that going, we need to have some kind of ordinance in place for, uh, for before they get going because Detroit got kind of caught and uh, people being get run over, people getting cutting off traffic, it, it, it's crazy. But like I said, here it, it was Dodge Park. Uh, I know it's gonna be more, but they, right now it's only limited to 300 in Detroit. Uh, will we come up with a limit on these? Like I said, it, it'll be a great way to cruise around Dodge Park. Uh, 
right now. So we need to, to put something in place for that. Uh, Mayor Taylor, as you know, the uh, street millage is coming up, safe streets millage is coming up. What have you started to put in place for that so we can get that off the people's back so we can get our raise ourselves? Like everyone else wants a raise, we want to raise. We had people, tons of people come down here before that meeting telling us, listen here, they was ready to sacrifice themselves for a little while. They wouldn't go to the movies, they wouldn't go out to the restaurants, but they was happy to help the police and the fire department. Now the police and the fire department got their raise. When are the people of this community going to get a raise? Another thing, Mayor Taylor, um, why this is the beginning of the school year why hasn't the superintendent from utica community schools or warren community schools been down here to tell us what kind of safety programs they have in place for an active shooter or something like that they, every at the beginning of every school year they should tell us what kind of new innovations they have coming up to that to that system before that system <coughs> happens to us um, I don't know why they're here. I don't know why you don't think about that. So if you could properly answer those, answer those questions, it'd be great. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Anyone else on communications from citizens? Uh, Mr. Mar we'll take you, Mr. Marshallones, first, and then, all right, okay, Salem, come on up. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. <coughs> My name is Salem Meram. I went to the police this morning, police station, to tell them two things. First of all, uh, I told them to be more lenient with people who make mistakes and they are given uh, tickets. Instead of that, I just mentioned to give them a warning. Secondly, I have some names in my pocket, and I want to see you on Thursday because I don't want to mention the names who are going to our garages. If you catch them, I, I came just to get some money, some, some uh, water. Sa Salem, speak into the microphone. It's hard on the TV to hear you if you're not talking into the mic. Uh, I, will, I will see you on, on Thursday to give you the names. I'm afraid of giving you the names of a gang, in fact burning houses, and another group come and to fix the house. Uh, the police told me they are aware of some, but not all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Salem. Mr. Marshall owns. Again, my name is Harry Marshallons. I want to conclude part of this last discussion. It says, you know, uh, we're concerned about the gentleman who was here last uh, council meeting. Uh, we think that he came here as a favor to speak for some other person or persons. Regardless as to why he is here at this time to speak, he should have known or been told the democratic process took place on April 17 when the majority of council voted against the bike trail in the Sterling Heights relief train. Again, we'd like to thank Liz, Maria, Deanna, and Barb, all councilwomen for their support and the wisdom they showed in reviewing all of the issues. Joe Romano from the county uh, also supported it. And Candace Miller, a lady uh, who obviously is stuck by her word. If the people didn't want it, she wouldn't push it. I wish uh, some of our council people would take the same hint. <clears throat> you know, um, the uh, Century newspaper just mentioned about the Clinton River and the fact that it starts up around Rochester Hills some 300 feet higher than Sterling Heights. So the water flows south 
and it uh, picks up speed with all the drainage plus all the relief drains and facilities made to contain water, flood waters, and then release them. Recently, uh, I guess a lady uh, lost some children up there. They were in inner tubes and they got caught up in the current of the Clinton River. And fortunately, there were some county workers that were able to uh, jump in the water and rescue these children. Uh, the rescue workers thought the water would only be about knee deep. It turned out to be chest deep because the water was flowing out of relief drains in other areas. At the same rate, I understand in the same newspaper that we had a floater uh, somewhere around Utica in the Clinton River. Uh, I don't think that individual was sunning himself. I think this was somebody that probably drowned or was drowned, whatever. But it does point out that fast moving water is a danger to everyone. Relief drains are created to be fast moving water. They fill in a matter of hours, have millions of gallons of water, and they drain in a matter of a day or a half a day. I think everybody should have the same wisdom as the four ladies that supported this, and Joe Romano and Candace Miller. Think it over, fellas. There's an election coming up. Thank you, Mr. Marshallones. Anyone else under communications from citizens? If not, I'll close <clears> that <throat> portion and go on to reports from city administration. Mr. Vanderpool, anything to follow up on tonight? Thank you, Mayor. Just um, briefly, a couple responses. Uh, first, there was a question about a sidewalk on uh, Utica Road from 18 to Van Dyke. As I mentioned earlier in my report, uh, phase two of Utica Road will be repaved next year. So we'll work with the county to figure out uh, where the sidewalk gaps are and to what extent they currently have a uh, right of way. Uh, if they do, then uh, those gaps will be easy to fill in. If they don't, then it's a more prolonged process. Uh, on the topic of sidewalks, uh, we have been working diligently over the last oh, 15, 20 years, closing as many <laughs> gaps as we can throughout the city. And we've made steady progress. At the last meeting, we reported on sidewalk gaps that were closed up on North Van Dyke. And every year, uh, we're closing gaps with sidewalks and installing uh, new bike hike trails and so on in the city. So we do have a new uh, non-motorized transportation plan that was approved by the Planning Commission and the City Council. And, and we follow that plan whenever we can, especially whenever we're constructing new roadways. Uh, so I just wanted the individual, uh, Mr. Mooney, to know that um, we, we are aware of the need to close gaps and we're doing as much as we possibly can. And we'll specifically look into Utica Road for you as well. All right, sir, it's, it's very difficult to hear, uh, hear you. We'll, we'll, uh, we're going to be concluding the meeting shortly and we'll get some more information from you if we can. And uh, there was a question regarding swings in Dodge Park. I'll have to follow up on that. I'm not sure if uh, that is an item that remains or, or not, but, and I'll, I'll get back with you, uh, Mr. Varna. Maybe after the meeting you could leave your uh, phone number with me. Um, with respect to M59, there was a question regarding uh, whether or not asphalt is the way to go. Uh, that was an MDOT project. Uh, MDOT has studied this very carefully, and when you get into a complete road uh, surface uh, replacement like that and install the necessary drainage and have the necessary depth of asphalt, uh, it can be constructed to have a similar or if not longer useful like concrete, and that's what MDOT determined. Uh, they're using that on uh, many roadways now across the state, on major trunk lines even. Uh, so it's possible there are some problems with it in certain areas. We have some of that on our own city road projects now and then, and that's why we have a warranty period. We certainly uh, would encourage MDOT to look at those problem areas, and I'll report uh, uh, the areas you mentioned to them just in case they're not aware. Um, with respect to scooters, uh, it has not been a problem in Sterling Heights. I don't expect it will be a problem uh, to the extent it is in more urbanized uh, big cities like Detroit and across the country. We don't allow motorized uh, 
uh, vehicles of any sort on our trails or on our sidewalks unless it's a, a handicap, a wheelchair, a motorized wheelchair, a scooter or the like um, for handicap purposes, not for recreational purposes. <clears throat> Mayor, I think that's all I can respond to this evening. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kashubsky, anything? Nothing for closed session tonight. Council, any uh, reports? New business? Mayor Taylor? Mrs. Schmidt. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, just a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool. Mr. Vanderpool, the um, tutoring program that Mrs. Turgeon spoke about earlier today, would it be possible for her to come up with a flyer or informational email to at least all the guidance counselors in the Utica and Warren Consolidated School Districts? I think. That's something that the schools could use as a resource as well. Um, and it doesn't seem like it would be too cumbersome for her to do that. Um, something at least, you know, like I said, to the uh, guidance counselors. Um, also, as far as safety checks, school safety, I can tell you, I'm not sure about Utica Community Schools. I will tell you as an employee of Warren Consolidated Schools and as a parent of Warren Consolidated Schools, the employees have all been trained, have been going through ongoing training for active shooter in the school. I think it's really unfortunate, but a realistic thing that, that you know, our society today warrants that we do. We prepare ourselves. Um, the schools are going through much more rigorous um, security to get in buildings and to get around buildings. Um, and as a parent, the superintendent reached out to every parent in the Warren Consolidated School District to let them know some of the things. I'm not sure that the school district really wants the general public um, to know the ins and outs of what security things they have in place. Um, why let the bad guys know what we're doing to secure our kids? So like I said, I'm not sure what Utica schools are doing, but Warren Consolidated has been very active and very proactive in keeping our kids safe. So as a parent, and as an employee, I'm very um, confident that um, God forbid anything happen in that district, that they do have um, protocols in place and uh, along working side by side all summer with our police and fire departments as well on active shooting scenarios. So um, I hope that answers your question there, Mr. Jefferson. And on um, a thankful note, um, we, I had a resident contact me, her street was being redone, Chippendale, and um, this resident called because they were still working on her street and there was already a crack. So if you're aware, you're, you know, we need residents to just reach out to us. I, you know, reached out to Mr. Bohorsky, who was um, taking over for Mr. Vanderpool, <laughs> and Mr. Bashaw, and it was rectified, it was taken care of. So we do have warranties in place on, um, you know, our construction. Uh, residents, you're our main line of information. If there's stuff going on that, that we can help, you know, rectify, then I, you know, I thank you, and I, and I hope you get in contact with all of us, because some of it, are very easy fixes. So um, get involved, give us a call. So I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Anyone else, Council? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Radke. Uh, I have two things. Uh, first, uh, through the chair to uh, Mr. Kashubsky or Ms. Riska, was there ever a resolution passed by this council about the Dodge Park Trail system? I don't believe anything ever came to a vote. I just want a confirmation of that. Mr. Kashubsky? I don't know, you'd have to research that. Please. Uh, also, I want to talk very shortly about what happened to me this week. Uh, I have a picture here of my cracked rim. <laughs> I was driving down 15 mile road uh, last, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, and I hit a pothole on the uh, westbound right lane right past the trail railroad tracks between Van Dyke and uh, Mound Road. And my tire started losing air. I thought I had uh, boned my tire, took the rim off, and I realized that there's a crack straight through the rim. A lot of folks ask us why we're working so hard on repairing our roads here in Sterling Heights and why we had to pass the additional millage to fix our roads. And my rim's a, a direct example of that. $285 out the door for a brand new rim. That's OEM. It's not from the dealer. The dealer was $544. So for me, uh, a lot of folks act like sometimes city council doesn't experience all the issues that the residents do. 
that we don't hit the same potholes and deal with the same road construction and see the same cracks in our sidewalk. Uh, like we live in a different place. And <laughs> going to work last uh, either Wednesday or Thursday, I learned firsthand that uh, I do live here and I had to buy a new rim for my car. So that's why we're working so hard on the roads and I, you know, hope we can fix them even better. I, we had that, that exact pothole patched that day, but I feel like sometimes residents say, well, 50 mile road to city road, it is. But unless we know about the potholes, unless we find out about them, we can't patch them. I called that one in to be patched, but it cost me $285 before it got done. That's all I have for my report, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Radke. Anyone else, council? Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Srowski. Um, and thank you very much, Mayor Taylor. I just wanted to say a couple of things. I do have to agree with Mr. Uh, Radke on one thing, that yes, I live at 18 in Van Dyke, and I, I'm completely unable to get out on my on the major roads for and in Utica, even though it is not being constructed yet, is a mess. So I under, we do understand your your dismay at all the roads. I even was in getting my pedicure today, and the ladies were complaining that the every road is busy. She they can't get out and anywhere. And I understand that. We understand that. So we're trying to work as fast as we can. The, the and just let you know that we experience the same problems as you do, just like Mr. Recky did. Um, and then one other note, I was watching the Weather Channel today, well, yesterday, um, and the they were talking about flash flooding and to bring up the flooding. I am, a I am fearful of, flood, of, of drowning. I would expect many people are. I was the, the Nazi mom that made the kids wear the life jackets until they were 18 years old. Yeah, that was fun, but the, the highest, the major cause of loss of life in the United States is drowning and primarily from flash floods. <coughs> not accident, well, accidental drowning, of course, but not any other accident but drowning. So I understand the fear of the residents who <coughs> live along that, that area about what could happen. I've seen that drain completely filled, so I understand that. And so I do, do want to just give support again that it is a great fear and it is my fear and I will do everything I can to make sure nobody accidentally drowns in the city of Sterling Heights. Thank you very much. Council, anyone else? Mr. Shannon. Uh, just really quickly to answer uh, Mr. Radke's question. No, there was never a vote. Um, it was basically, I think if I recall, council went along and kind of expressed how they felt about the situation. Uh, at that time I had said, well, I would like to get more information, but just to be clear at this point, I have, it is not on my agenda to pursue any sort of bike path. As I explained to Mr. Marshall Lons two weeks ago, it's not on my agenda to, uh, to pursue a bike path on the Sterling mm -hmm. Relief train. So that's where I'm at on that, on that issue. Council, Mrs. Koski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool, is there any hope of a sidewalk um, east of Saul on Clinton River, south side? Is there any chance that that might be taken care of this year? Can you repeat that, east of Saul on Clinton River? Yes. I thought we were going to do that, Mr. With that Clinton River. We were going paving. to do that a what couple years ago, Mr. Vanderpool. Yes, Mayor, you are correct, and Councilwoman Koski, there it, it is in our plan. We budgeted to have the sidewalk installed. We're having problems getting the final. There's one holdout for right of way, and we're having some trouble getting that uh, negotiated uh, right of way agreement with them. But once we have that last remaining parcel, we'll be able to install the sidewalk. Thank you. One other thing, in regard to uh, school starting up, with the school buses and they're uh, picking up and dropping off children, when they put out their stop sign, do we have anything to remind the residents that when you are oncoming, if you are required to stop and wait until the bus is ready to move forward? Uh, Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. That, that's a really good question. I don't know if we have any prepared material, but if not, I think it's, it can be easily done. I think we can put out some uh, uh, bus awareness tips uh, via our listservs, our social media, and on our uh, police department uh, Facebook page as well. So I'll look into that. Thank you. Mrs. Zarco, anything? Um the only question I would have, and we don't, wouldn't be able to get the answer today, but if Mr. Vanderpool could find out for us the advantages of the diagonal cuts that are being done across the roadways rather than straight cuts, and the advantages that um, for the motorists as far as the roads, maybe for the next meeting, if you could tell us, that would be great. All right. Uh, 
couple things for me, responses from some residents. Um, Salem, I'm not gonna be here Thursday for my office hours. Uh, there was unfortunately a death in the family, so I'm gonna be in Grand Rapids for a funeral. But, uh, I, well, okay, we'll, we'll talk for a minute after the meeting. Um, regarding uh, active shooters and what the, what the schools are doing, I'll tell you, I've been in contact with uh, Utica Community Schools and they have uh, major upgrades to safety that they're proposing uh, as part of an upcoming uh, bond proposal. And uh, I think, as Mrs. Schmidt said, a lot of a lot of it is going to be things I think like like better security, better locks on doors, better cameras. But you know what they're going to do in the event of an active shooter, you don't really you don't want to tell the public. You don't want to tell you know a potential school shooter what you're doing to prevent them because then they'll know the workaround. So I, I think. For a lot of that stuff, they're they're um, they're not going to reveal what they're what all of the secrets they're doing, but I think the public can rest assured that uh, in my discussions with both um, both Dr. Johns and Dr. Livernoy, school safety is their uh, number one concern. Um, what else? Just on the drain, just very briefly, I want to I want to point something out. In 2016. 25,691 Sterling Heights residents voted no on the Parks and Recreation Initiative. The eight or so million dollars of improvements across the street, the new recreation center, um, the re improvements to every single park in Sterling Heights, the soccer field that's wildly popular, the splash pad that generated, I don't know, 20 times as much income in this summer as we were originally projecting. It was full almost every single day. The farmer's market pavilion, the amphitheater, which, I mean, these are the things that in all of my time on the city council over the last eight or nine years, more so than any other service improvement, I've gotten more compliments about this. I've been thanked more times about these park improvements. And every time I get thanked, I say, no, thank you. You're the ones that voted. It only passed by you know, a very, very slim margin. 25,691 people voted no on that. That would fill all of the Palace of Auburn Hills and then some. I mean, can you imagine if the entire Palace of Auburn Hills or close to, you know, close to all of Comerica Park was yelling at us, no, do not do the Parks and Recreation Initiative. That'd be overwhelming, right? And we had a couple dozen people come and say no about the bike trail. A couple dozen, right? We do not have a scientific survey or study about what the community wants with that bike path. And I don't care how many times you come up here and say it, the people have not spoken. A few people have. One-tenth of one-tenth of one percent of the residents have spoken about the proposed Sterling Relief Drain. So in my opinion, that's really not that's not like some precedent has been set that we can no longer do this because all of a sudden 15 or 20 people said they don't want it. And the same thing is true. If 150 people came and packed this entire city council chamber and said we want a bike path on the Sterling Relief Drain, that's not gonna be a reason to do it either. The reason to do something is if it makes sense, if it benefits the community. So. I'm gonna say from my standpoint, I am going to continue as long as I'm sitting in this chair or any chair up here, I am going to continue to find ways to improve this community, to improve the quality of life for our residents, to improve property values, to do things that benefit all of the residents of the city of Sterling Heights. And no matter what we do, some people are gonna be happy, some people are gonna be upset. That's just the matter, that just, just comes with the territory. We all know that. So. To me, uh, I think this, you know, a bike path on the Sterling Relief Drain makes uh, a lot of sense. Um, we want to be a city that encourages people to get out into their community, to get out, explore the natural amenities that we have, uh, to recreate, to get out and, and move. And uh, I certainly think that if we put a bike path there, it would have a, a lot of use there would be thousands and thousands of people that would traverse that bike path and use that bike path. And so, as I said, 
You know, if we were just going to listen to a couple dozen people who said no, then I could find a couple dozen people that would want to shut down the entire police department, contract it out to the sheriff. I could find a couple dozen people that would want to turn us into a volunteer fire department. I could find a couple. I could find a couple dozen people who would say anything. So that that in and of itself is not really. Uh, here, let me let me get that. I'm sorry. <laughs> not even my phone. I took my husband's by accident. I didn't realize it was in there. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Bob, you got a missed call. That's why I so. didn't even know whose <laughs> ring it was. <laughs> uh, all right. Sorry. Anyway, so so that's my feeling. Does it benefit the, the entire city of Sterling Heights? Is it something that improves the quality of life for the vast majority of the residents of Sterling Heights? Yeah, I think so. I think it would be. And so, um, you know, I, I hate to be blunt, but a few people came up and said they don't want it. Okay, what's your point? You know, until I have very clear direction from the community, and even you could say 26,000 people voted no on the Parks and Recreation Initiative. <clears throat> I'm glad the other, I'm glad a few people more voted yes. And would I say, you know, we shouldn't have done that because 26,000 people didn't want it? Absolutely not. That's the best thing that's happened since I've been on the city council. So um, that's all I got. So I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Okay.